Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. This is Love Yanji and thank you so much sa mga nanood ng first vlog ko po about this pregnancy chapter. And hindi na ako magpapatumpik-tumpik pa. So, ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon is part 1 pa din but it's all about your finances. Yes! Finances. Pera. Gastos. Expenses. Savings. Yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. start with preggy financial matter. The first one is you have to determine your situation or your case type scenario. So the three case type scenario that we have is the first one you got pregnant before coming here in Canada. The second one is you got pregnant while you are studying here in Canada which yun yung sa akin. And the third one is you are planning to get pregnant while you are studying or working here in Canada. Ibig sabihin, this is not an expected plan. Okay, kung sa na-determine na mo na yung case type scenario mo, now let's move on to the type of insurance health plan that you have right now. I guess this is the number one that most of the international students have right now is yung school health insurance. Yes, some of the schools in other provinces, they really required international student to have health insurance plan coverage but some of the provinces naman they covered international student as well as long as they meet the certain eligibility requirement here are the three things that pwede kong suggest sa inyo when you have school health insurance plan the first one is you have to know the maternity coverage kasi napaka importante niyan you have to communicate with the insurance health provider para malaman mo kung ano yung buong coverage ng maternity. One is yung upfront payment and reimbursement process. Kasi may mga services kapag ka nabuntis ka, you have to pay first and then do the reimbursement process. Like what I did before is meron akong special genetic testing. I guess it's required here in Canada. So, nag-upfront payment muna ako, then saka ako siya in-reimburse dun sa school health insurance provider. Third but not least is yung direct billing process. Yes, merong mga health insurance provider na nagpo-provide sila or nag-offer ng direct billing process. Dito mga mamshi, kapag nabuntis ka, ang una mong gagawin, kontakin mo yung health insurance provider. Ask them if they offer direct billing process. Kasi, alam mo na, mas makakatulong sa yun. It will save you a lot of money. Hindi ka na mag front payment. Ang gagawin mo lang is book an appointment dun sa service provider and then send it to the insurance provider para maayos po nila. Let's move on to the second type of health insurance plan. It's the um, employer's health insurance plan. Sa mga mga she, karaniwan si OWP ang nagkakaroon nito. And then si student magiging dependent siya. Insurance plan, eh hindi lahat ng employer ay nagpo-provide o nagbibigay ng libre. Sometimes, half-half yung magbabayad sa employer ng kalahati, magbabayad din sa employer ng kalahati. Or, they can offer you a lower premium monthly premium na babayaran mo, ibabawas na lang siya sa sweldo mo. Well, anyhow, anyway, still same with the um, school health insurance plan. Meron din siyang direct billing process, meron din siyang uh, upfront payment and reimbursement process. And of course, you have to know the maternity coverage. And last but not the least type of health insurance plan is yung is yung <laughs> Is yung, okay, is yung ano, yung Provincial Health Insurance Plan. So, ito, napakalaking tulong talaga ng Provincial Health Insurance Plan. Okay, kisabay na naman yung anak ko. So, <laughs> yung Provincial Health Insurance Plan, i-cover niya talaga yung pregnancy-related expenses mo. Especially yung labor and delivery or if cesarean ka. So, 
napakalaking tulong kasi madi-discharge ka sa hospital nang wala kang babayaran and automatically si baby meron na siya kagad provincial health insurance coverage. So mga ma'am, she na determine niyo na kung ano ang inyong case type scenario and type of insurance health plan na meron ka ngayon. Uh, paano kung wala kang health insurance plan? Meron po tayo mga midwife dito sa Canada. They are publicly funded by the government. And um, you can have consultation with them. And they're offering free services for labor and delivery as well. And hindi na tayo magpapatumpik-tumpik pa. Next is what to spend when you are expecting. I am just going to give a highlight of this list. Kasi meron akong separate blog. Which nandoon po yung complete list. I I'm I'm not saying it's a complete list, but yun kasi yung mga na experience ko na pwede ko may share sa inyo. And if you have something in your mind, maybe you can send me a message. Pwede natin siyang i-add. On top of my list is yung prenatal charges. Nandyan yung uh, prenatal checkup, prenatal vitamins, and the uh, prenatal screening. So, napaka-importante na tip ko dito is if you have health insurance plan, whether school or sa employer, communicate with the insurance health provider to provide you yung full coverage ng maternity benefits nyo. Kasi at least, may estimate mo na kung ano yung mga pwedeng makover at hindi makocover at makakapag-save ka na ng money agad. And another helpful saving tip is ask sample of prenatal vitamins. So, ako noon, nakalibre ako ng for 7 months. Kasi nung first checkup ko, binigyan ako agad nung nurse ng pang 5 months na vitamins. So, sobrang helpful talaga nung nurse sa akin. The next one is yung labor and delivery charges. Nako, ito yung mabigat dyan eh. So, kung meron kang provincial health insurance plan, 100% makukover yan. So, lalabas ka, mani-discharge ka ng hospital na wala kang babayaran ni 5 cents. Yes. And, automatically, si baby meron na din siyang provincial health insurance plan. Now, in terms of uh, school health insurance plan and employer's health insurance plan, ito yung tip ko dyan. Alamin mo kung ano yung, yung maximum coverage niya. Huwag na coordinate benefits. So, for example, if meron kang provincial health insurance, most likely yung accommodation mo or yung room mo is ward lamang po. Yun po yung nakalagay doon. Now, kung meron kang private insurance such as school and employers, pwede mo siyang i-coordinate. So, pwedeng mag-adjust. So, instead of ward ka, mapupunta ka sa private or semi-private room. Ito pa yung pinakamabigat dyan. Siyempre, labor and delivery charges to, di ba? So, nung first time ko magpa-check up sa OB ko, so, nagtanong ako sa kanya kung magkano ba yung magagastos kapag ka, halimbawa, private client ka, wala kang provincial or any health insurance. So, binigyan niya ako ng listahan. Eh, nawindang ako kasi libo-libo yung nakalisto doon. Masaklap pa doon mga mamshi. Halimbawa, kung nagtatry kang mag-normal delivery, no? And then, gusto mo ng epidural anesthesia. Kung wala kang provincial health insurance, nako, extra payment po yan. Hindi lang yung mismong anesthesia yung babayaran mo, pati yung professional fee nung anesthetist. O, oh, di ba? And syempre, pagkatapos mong mga anak, merong pediatrician. Another expenses na naman yan. So, may professional fee, may newborn care fee, ang dami. Next on our list is yung nursery and baby gear. Naku, ito talaga yung gustong-gusto ko eh. Yung mga bibili ka ng mga gamit ng baby. Pero alam niyo mga mom, siya ito natutunan ko as a first time mom is to be practical. And, and take one step at a time sa pagbili ng gamit ng bata. Nung nanganak ako, actually, ang dala ko lang is yung 32 pieces ng newborn size na diaper. And nagamit lang ni Remo yun for 5 days and then nag-move na kami agad to size 1. So, isipin nyo kung bumili ako ng 
isang tamakmak na newborn size na diaper. Eh, Diyos ko, nagsayang lang ako ng pera, mga mamshi. And alam nyo ba na gusto gusto ko din bumili nung uh, bottle sterilizer. Pero, actually, wala kami nun. Kasi nagta-traditional method pa din ako. So, tinatsyagaan ko talaga ang paglilinis ng bote ni Rimo araw-araw. Hmm, diba? For the helpful saving tips, number one is yung hand-me-down or second hand. So, para sa mga baby gear or furnitures ni baby, try to look for some second hand items. Hindi naman masamang bumili ng second hand items as long as malinis pa siya. So, ako, yung ibang baby items ni Rimo such as yung car seat niya, yung stroller, galing sa mga ninang ngayon, mga hand-me-down items. So, thank you sa mga ninangs! And, Second one is take one step at a time. So, wag bibili agad-agad ng mga bagay-bagay kung hindi mo naman, I mean, hindi kailangan ng baby mo agad. On our list is yung baby feeding. Yes, ito. So, nung time ko kasi, pinanganak ko si Raymond. Medyo bumaba yung sugar niya at the time. So, kailangan siyang bigyan ng formula milk. So, yun nagme-mix feeding ako. So, breast milk tsaka formula feeding. Another expenses ang formula feeding dito. Mga mom siya, mahal din kahit pa paano. Malaki si baby. Siyempre, kailangan niya ng um, extra nutrition. <laughs> so, mag start na siyang kumain. So, si Rimo, nag-start siyang kumain at 4 months. Ang aga, di ba? Kasi sa Pilipinas, 6 months, nag start kumain yung mga bata. Advised by the pediatrician, to start rice cereals for 3 days and then pwede na kami mag-proceed sa mga greens. O, oh, diba? Napakabilis na ang transition ng feeding dito. Ako saving tips natin para sa baby feeding, magpa-breastfeeding kayo, mga mamshi. Bukod sa masustansya na makakasave ka pa. O, oh, diba? And when it comes to baby food naman, um, itry nyo gumawa ng baby food masaya kaya siya. Nagmimix ka ng mga gulay, magmimix ka ng mga prutas. At eto na. Eto na talaga mga mamshi. Ang kawindang-windang na napakalaking gastos is yung child care. <laughs> Oo mga mamshi. Mahal po kaya magpaalaga dito. So isipin nyo, kung magpapaalaga ka sa licensed child care talaga, mahal po siya. So, abutin ka ng mga, lalo na pag baby infants, sa abutin ka ng uh, around 80 to 100. Yes. That is 80 to 100 per day. Ang mahal din ba? Helpful saving tips for the child care fee. to Importante. Apply kayo ng child care fee subsidy. Hindi ko pa pinapanganak si Remo, nag-apply na ako ng child care fee subsidy kasi minigsabi sa akin, agahan ko ang pag apply kasi mahaba yung waiting list. One thing you have to note with the child care fee subsidy is depende po yan sa family income nyo. Hindi siya basta-basta na libre lahat. So, depende yan sa assessment ng uh, children's services. They will check your income, your status as well. So, bring yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na limited din yung benefit. Helpful saving this for child care. Fee. Meron tayong mga home-based child care. So, mas mababa yung fee nila kesa dun sa mga um, malalaking child care center kasi home-based po ito. And the number of kids are limited as well. Pero pa din naman yung ibibigay nila sa baby mga mamshi. So, if you want to know the complete list, head to my website www.loveyangie.com or check the description down below. Nandyan po yung link ng topic na ito. So, I hope you guys learned something from this about your finances and what to spend when you are expecting. And that's the end of our part 1 all about your finances so natapos natin ang part 1 consideration about your situation and finances so next vlog po natin is we're moving on to the part 2 the challenges so yan na
Thank you so much for watching my vlog and please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button below para lagi po kayong updated sa aking mga vlog and see you next time. Bye!